Okay, we are live now. Hey everyone, we're here for the book club for uh, Letters to a Young Feminist. I don't know how to, Phyllis? Phyllis Chessler? Chessler. Phyllis Chessler. PhD. Dr. Phyllis Chessler. Um, so we're here with Chandra of Greer. She owns, Hello. if, if LWA had a church, it would be her store, <laughs> like straight up. I like, love it. Yeah. I even do my love little it. annual pilgrimage there. You do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> Anymore, you, you go on like bike or foot too. Yeah. Yeah. She crawls. Mm -hmm. And we're there to meet her. She prostrates the whole Exactly. <laughs> we offer her refreshments. I bathe her feet. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. So then, you were uh, awesome enough to host our ten-year anniversary party last great. week. Thank you. And you were also awesome enough to host our very first letter social. What well, I don't even know, like seven years ago. Yeah, many, many years. That was yeah. so. That was great. Yeah, super fun. I get more out of it than you do. Guaranteed. <laughs> true. Mm -hmm. um, so, would you tell us how you got into letters and letter writing? I. I'm just a sucker for people communicating with each other and being kind to each other and expressing emotion within themselves and to other people in a positive way. Yeah. So that's why letters really appealed to me. And I also feel like letters are history, they're personal history. Mm -hmm. And I, I think with the decline in letter writing, a lot of us are going to be really sorry that we're not going to have those letters to look back on and understand what, you know, for, in my case, my mom has written me letters about how she grew up mm -hmm. and how her mother ran their farm. And that's history, which I'll have forever. Yeah. So I think being able to be a part of that and facilitate that and to do it as a business is just a huge privilege. So I'm going to put That's you it. on the spot. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to ask you, what is your favorite um, paper to write on? To write on? Currently. Currently, yeah. Because I know like it has current, to probably change like every week. It does change a lot. <laughs> uh, it's got to be a Malfi. Okay. Because it's like eating a, a meal when I'm writing on that paper. Because <laughs> <laughs> nice. it's so delicious. It's nice. Yeah, it is. It's like decadent. I don't know if I've seen it. Does it come in a pad or in a notepad? Um, sheets. Sheets. Yeah. Oh, sheets. Okay. Cards, folded cards, large or small sheets. Um, it's made on the Amalfi Coast in Italy, obviously. Oh, okay. And, yeah, it just feels really ritualistic when you use that paper because it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You can't just, like, grab it and start writing. You're, you have to hold it like this, <laughs> put it down like that. Yeah. Grab your pen, move it where. I mean, like, you, yeah. So I like it for that reason. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so then let's go from the from Donovan over. Your general oh. feelings about the book. I'm glad I read it. Uh, it certainly got my fire up a lot. Hmm. I'm not certain how useful my reading of it was mm -hmm. but I feel like it would be very useful for someone younger than myself and someone that you know just isn't me um I've always felt like an old soul mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I feel like she's she's preaching to the choir the entire time I was reading this book. But I know that I have, for example, I have a stepsister who is in high school and I think she would greatly benefit from reading this book. Right. And I'm going to send her a copy and whether or not she reads it is going to be up to her. But, uh, yeah, I think young women and young men need to read mm. this book. Probably young men more, more than young yeah, women. Yeah, I would agree. Because... They men just do not understand the level of punishment women put themselves through on men's behalf. Mm. Yeah, I would also Ever. say on top yeah. of that, like how used to it we get, Ugh. right? Yeah. Like we just get accustomed to it because 
we don't know any other way really sometimes yeah. like there was this uh, article about a guy who with his female coworker, somehow the, their emails got switched up so she started getting his emails and he started getting her emails and while it was getting fixed they were like well whatever we'll just pretend to be each other because it shouldn't matter mm -hmm. ends up when he was acting as her no one was taking him seriously as a woman um, the deals weren't easier for him to close. They were like salespeople. And for her, she's like, it was the best, most productive week I ever had. Yeah. Oh, wow. And he's like, I thought she was just exaggerating until I was pretending to be a female, basically. Oh, that's interesting. You're exaggerating. Not all men are like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're yeah, not yeah. working hard enough. Right. Yeah. No, it's so true. So, but like, she was like, I had no idea because that's the wish it's always been for her. So she didn't know either, you yeah. know? So it was, it's weird, like what we get accustomed to. It's so true. Yeah. Well, talking about it is definitely key. Yeah. Um, I, I actually like the book a lot. And I, I realized one of the reasons I. Okay. Yay. We're back. Oh. Yay! How far? I don't How know do where know? we left off. I don't know. What is the last thing everyone heard? <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us. Our internet went out. Let's um, see. Oh, hang on. But you know, whatever. Well, anyway, I mean, I think that it just made me feel like more like I want to be even more of a warrior mm -hmm. and a helper. Yeah. Um. So I, I got that out of it. Um, so my general thought was, I, I felt like Donovan where I was like, okay, yeah, she's preaching to the choir. Although man, that first chapter, I was like, yes, yes, <laughs> you know, so, um, that was pretty great. And then, uh, after that, I was like, I don't know who the target audience is for this. And I don't necessarily know what she's trying to say in general. So that kind of got to me. And um, I just, I went into this after reading um, Angela Davis's uh, Women, Race, and Class. So mm. coming off of that to mm. this, I was like, what are you trying to teach me? I don't have any, I'm, you're not like, I'm not learning really per se. So maybe that was the wrong order to read like This feels like a 101 book. Yeah. That's yeah, definitely yeah, 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 yeah. A, a 201 book. That's yeah. the kind of things you don't know in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could see that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and so that, that was, I don't know. And then I was, I was telling you when we talked about this, we totally cheated. Normally we don't talk about this book beforehand, but we did. Yeah. So Wait, sorry about I mean, that. We guys. all did. Kathy yeah. and I got a drink yesterday and we're, we're like, like, blah, blah, blah. This yeah. Book. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the, the other thing was that, she didn't to me wasn't very hopeful like you know we're saying oh she wrote this in 90 in like the mid 90s and i feel like everything is still valid it all it is all still the same so it made me feel like we are sisyphus just rolling this rock up the hill over and over and over again but at the same time i guess it's not because she when she was saying I mean, in the she, 50s like it wasn't you know yeah. a lot of things happened I, things are way better than the 50s yes. oh, oh yeah yeah <laughs> completely. I mean, like, yeah. like it is a rock that we continually roll uphill but yeah. unfortunately we have erosion Yes. And yeah. That rock is wearing down over time. Right. Yeah. It really does. I mean, it has no, gotten it better. Has. It just isn't right. Yeah. And it just takes work. Yeah. So if you felt the same way I did, then what I would suggest to you is Rebecca Solnit's um, Men Explain Things to Me, because it kind of has the same concept, but I felt it was very, it gave me fire, inspiration, and hope. And this one just left me feeling very flat and hopeless. But mm. if I was 13, I would freaking love this book mm -hmm. because I, it, to me, 101, right? I'd be like, oh, this, hap this is what happened before. And this mm -hmm. was, you know, I think I'd probably be, yeah, like more ready to like chop some heads. Although when you were talking about catcalling mm -hmm. um, before the internet went out, sorry about that again, um, was that... I, I kind of want to put together a roving gang of women who just catcall men. Oh. And just see what happens. I'll like, how do they feel? Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them will probably like it, though. Okay. Yeah. But we're in a group that we're gonna, they're going to be scared of. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Yeah, I'm sure they would be. Um, 
I guess one of the things I did like about this book is the universality of it. Mm -hmm. For me to relate to so much of what she wrote, there's like some fundamental truth truths that she hit on. That was actually kind of frightening for me. Yeah. Like, oh my God, all of this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that is actually kind of depressing that it hasn't changed in 20 years. Um, but she did say we have to, like you were saying, yeah, we yeah. have to work. We have to work. Yeah. I mean, and I suppose that's what I was missing out of the book was like, okay, I want to, I want to work. Yeah. Where do I work? And then it's just sort of, it's left very open ended. <clears throat> um, I don't know, maybe an extra reading list in the back. Yeah. yeah. Or something. Well, I mean, it was written 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's part of the problem. Yeah. You know? I mean, because I, I went to the Women's March, had a great time, had a great partner. The With women's my <laughs> and, and we had the best signs, didn't we? We did. Mm -hmm. um, go, to, go to my Twitter. Very nice see, tight, see my signs. Tight um, faces. But it, there's a lot of talk among feminist circles that, about that, you know, we had this great turnout at the Women's March, and what is that doing materially? for women. What is that? How are we making our day to day lives better? Like, are we just taking that as a symbolic gesture? Like, how is that translating into a better world for women? And I hope people that went to the Women's March are thinking about that every day. They, that's the only way it is going to have an yeah. impact yeah. on an individual level. We can all go and march and feel strongly about it, but then if we go back to our original lives and don't stand up to injustice, ask for a raise, insist that our husband do whatever around all these things, then it's nothing. Yeah. It's absolutely nothing. But the, I think that the march was what you're saying is your general thoughts on this book is that you felt validated, right? So yes. that we all felt validated because true. of the march, which right. is very powerful because if That's you feel so like true. you're by yourself, you feel like you're like helpless right it's so true so yeah and that's very valuable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah which is why you're saying you're not gonna go catcalling men alone right i would yeah. do it in the roaming group yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and i want a lot of snapping <laughs> like it's west side story or something <laughs> can we all get like jackets oh yeah <laughs> Um, so when we were talking about this earlier, you mentioned the part that you uh, liked about the book was her talking about relationships. And mm -hmm. um, so you can, can you speak more about that? Yeah, I thought that um, I like the fact that she stressed that relationships, she sort of went from the 1950s model of getting married so that you could be taken care of. Mm -hmm to what she saw as the modern model of getting married because you wanted a partner in life who you could go through life on an equal basis with. Mm -hmm. And not only seeking that person, but making sure that in a relationship it stayed on that course. I loved that part because I think a lot of people, women's unhappiness is not having equal relationships. They love this person, but there's this underlying resentment because they're not real partners. Mm -hmm. And I think that when your power is zapped at home in that sort of subtle way, you're going to feel less powerful out of the home. Yeah. You know? So I think that that kind of starting at home in your relationship is, it just really resonated with me because I honestly don't know personally a lot of women who I feel like are on equal footing with their husband. I'm just, that's just the painful, I'm just being yeah. real here. Either they do more with the kids or they do more of the housework or they don't, you know, the decision making is unequal. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think that if you're going to achieve equality in the world or something approaching it, it it's got to start at home. I really feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like so many of those women probably <clears throat> feel that way. Yeah. And their husband has zero clue and would probably be really open if to these ideas. Yeah. If she felt 
comfortable enough in herself and in her wants and needs to actually have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But, and I, this is going to my highlighting thing. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we expect women, but not men, to live up to the idealized standards of perfection, to be super women. When a woman, woman turns out to be a human being, not a god, everyone, including the woman herself, tends to feel betrayed. Right. I got oh, that one good. Oh, God, I love that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we should not be loved by a man for what we can do for them. We should be loved by a man for who we are. You know, so I think that should be the foundation of affection and love and partnership. I there I highlighted something under the marriage in the marriage chapter as well that I really liked. It's you should only make alliances with peers, not with those who are more powerful than you. And she didn't mean inherently powerful. I think I think she meant as in giving the other person the power. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In the relationship, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I like that. I like what she had to say about that. And it, it's interesting, I was reflecting back on how I was raised, which in some ways was a lot like her. Like my mom thought that, um, you know, fishnet stockings meant you were a hooker and mm -hmm. red boys shoes. were bad, red, red shoes. shoes. Yeah, anything just very narrow in what she thought was proper for a lady. But the one thing she taught us, mm -hmm. which I think back on it, blows my mind that this 70s, 60s housewife made sure that we knew was she always told us, get your education, don't be dependent on a man. Oh, that's awesome. Which for that time, and I don't even know where that came from. Yeah. It was so conventional, mm -hmm. but she used to be She that. could see the out. <laughs> she could see the out. That if she had it she would have taken it yeah oh so true yeah yeah that's what my husband said he said she wishes that she had that up and we mm -hmm. are so kathy and i have zero not zero but like so little concept of what it would be to not have to fight for your education it was unspoken for both of us that we would. Of course, we you would, would go. go. To, we would go to college. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, we no. would go to college three or four times. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, no, no. Like in some <laughs> cases. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I was actually telling Donovan that it was interesting to me to read someone else's story who was a first American in the family mm. because um, I am the first American in my family, and all of my friends were either have been in America for generations or they moved here when they're like toddlers. So I was the only one that had this like a foot in both worlds where I can't claim allegiance to any of the five countries that my families came from. Um, but then they expect me to do things the way that they did them in those countries, you know? So, mm -hmm. and anytime I was lazy or getting C's, it's like, well, we didn't come all the way to this country <laughs> for you not to get an education, you know? It's like, well, yeah. thanks for the kill trip people. Yeah. So that's why you go to school three times. Yeah. <laughs> that makes all the sense in the world. It really does. But yeah, but yeah. it's just the, the fact that it's a privilege. We we are so great. We had so much. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And we still have to just wade through shit every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. It doesn't even matter, does it? Yeah, yeah. it's just, you just gotta it's have easier, to fight back but... from it every mm -hmm. single day. And it's just like, we can say the statistics. Like, mm -hmm. we all know that women earn 73 cents on the dollar for men. And it's just like, okay, so pay women 27 cents more. It's not hard. <laughs> Why don't you just do that? Oh, because you're going to leave anyway when you have a baby. So, just... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you know that? You know what I heard mm. back in my corporate days? Well, you, you've got a husband. Mm. Joe's got to support a wife and a kid. Yeah. That, I don't, I shouldn't bear the burden of jo Joe's family choices, should I? No. And it doesn't mean <laughs> that you do less work than he does. So exactly. It's like, yeah. In fact, yeah, I probably do more, more because work Joe. <laughs> Joe has a kid and has to go home and yeah. I could like stay here till nine. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I actually heard that. Asking for why I wasn't making yeah what my peer was making. It's just she goes on in this this paragraph. It's just like 
for a woman does 20 things right and two things wrong mm -hmm. and we hang her for those two things she did wrong yeah those as, emails as, yeah right. like yeah. And a man if he does 20 <laughs> things wrong and two things right people will be like well at least he didn't abuse his child at least he's paying child support like what no i liked that paragraph a lot like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just yep it's 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 a very hard thing to do on a daily basis and people that aren't women don't tend to understand that it is very hard for women on a daily basis yeah yeah i i was talking to my husband about that because we've been doing some things around the house and it's so interesting going to showrooms with him as opposed to going alone, mm. we walk in. Hello, sir. How may I help? How may I help you? You know what do you? I go in, um, looking for somebody. Hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, to, uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> exactly. They're back there on their phone. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It it's insane the difference. Insane. Yeah. That's fucked up. I know. I laugh because, you know, what, yeah, can, well, what else can you do? Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But I tell him, I said, you know, you realize that this was just me as we're driving home that I'd still be sitting there waiting for somebody to come help me. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Because they just assume, well, if the man's there, that's serious. They're well, you know, it's, it, she won't have to go home sale. and ask him if she could buy the carpet. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's yeah. very interesting. Meanwhile, I know who's buying that carpet. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The only reason he's there is because... So you can get the service faster. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can struggle he's through this, beard. or I can yeah. nail this in the bud. Oh, my God. Him being your beard is great. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, he's my interior design beard. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, so yeah. and then another thing you had mentioned or maybe it was donovan mentioned it earlier was talking about supporting your sisters and um it's funny to me because you know i think she mentioned like saying oh um how women are like well i don't like women because they're catty and gossipy that was 100 oh, percent me did. when i was like 16 you know mm -hmm. and now i'm like no no that's not the case i'm tearing them down um yeah. But I think it actually took working in the craft fair uh, venue to figure out that you don't need to fight people because it was like um, someone could be doing stationary, but we're not competitors per se. Like right. we're all in the same, like we all go through the same issues. We like, you know, as, as craft fair people, we all are putting up our tents at 6 AM, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. So um, I don't know. And like that, that being in, in like, craft fairs really made me feel like no everyone in this and that is you know self-employed has to support each other because you can't just tear people down and like i don't know why it took me being a business owner to figure that one out and not just being a woman i would also hmm. also argue though that like women can be assholes too oh 100 <laughs> percent. like yeah it's it, this this whole concept of not supporting women is only a crime if you're a woman like we've got ivanka trump to worry about mm -hmm. and there are I she I cannot support her. I mean, and I believe that is a legitimate criticism. Mm -hmm. And but because she is a woman, I can be attacked by non-feminists because I am not supporting Ivanka Trump. Right. Interesting. I got what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I'm just coming at it from the angle of like, you know, we just can't be like, well, I'm not friends with women because gossip and it's like well right you know agree that's yeah, you no, being it has to be a legitimate asshole. criticism yeah right. i'm not friends with ivanka trump because, because she is complicit i was just in, gonna say that in a structured I'm system guessing. that <laughs> destroys the things that i hold dear <laughs> mm -hmm. like she's mm -hmm. actively working against me yeah i do not agree yeah do not like <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, I uh, I found a lot of key things in in the book very interesting, but I just feel like there's some books that came before and some books that came after that I think are doing a better job. But maybe it's just because I think it's a good start. I want to read those. 
Oh my god. You know, I put up a list. You need yeah. a list because I just realized that I have not read enough books like this in my life. Yeah. There is a great exhibit right now at the Art Institute. It's in the drawing gallery. Um, and it's called Human Three Human Reading List 3.0. It might mm -hmm. just be called Human 3.0. Mm -hmm. And the artist has drawn the covers of all of these particular books. And sometimes her hand is holding the book or whatever, but the handout of the exhibit is the book list. Nice. Ooh. And it's really good. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's just it's got Angela Davis on there, Geraldine Brooks, and Octavia yeah. Butler, and just like yeah. so many books that I need to read. Yeah, I think that this need. is my problem is the order that I read this in. It's like it was seriously yeah, like. Yeah, you're advanced. Yeah, it was like this Rebecca too... Solnit, and, yeah. you know, um, and then, yeah, uh, Angela Davis, and then we read Octavia Butler, the trilogy. Mm -hmm. So, and then I read this, and it was like, oh, okay. But I mean, yeah, I think it's important as, like, the base to yeah. build upon, you know? And I think that your daughter should totally Definitely read this. They are going to have to read it. <clears throat> and I also and decided. About yeah, and talk about talk it. about it. And I decided that each of them, I'm going to make it mandatory that they each take a women's studies class in college. Oh, heck yeah. They're, they they won't have any choice. It won't be optional. Yeah. Hopefully, it's yeah. already made. Hopefully, in what I, you would hope so. Mm -hmm. It probably, probably will not. be. No. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on I where they go. I hope it is. But, um, but I think they definitely need to yeah. incorporate yeah. that into their academic experience. <clears throat> yes. Something that you had also mentioned earlier, which may be... Uh, like I didn't realize as an action point because I was like, oh, what are the resolutions from this book, right? Which is, you said, no, we are responsible to uh, force men, basically, mm -hmm. or teach men to to be, like, you know, right. feminists, basically. Be, right, <clears throat> exactly. Um, so I think that's probably the takeaway is that, you know, we can't allow our men to be complicit in, by inaction. Exactly. So we can't expect them to just magically be that person mm -hmm. you know we have to teach them and show them yeah yes yeah That's uh, really true kathy and i have a we we are role players we play dungeons and dragons yes and we have a group with another woman who is the other player and then my husband is our dungeon master and he made some someone there was a poll and someone made a stripper poll comment it may have been Kathy, it may have been me, I don't know. Dylan made some sexy remark. And then Megan, she was like, she pointed out that uh, that strippers should be seen as strong and flexible. Hmm. And I was like, yeah. It's hard. Yeah. You know how much upper strength they yeah. need? No, it's I mean, insanely then I was like, hard. you know what? You look I at am their so bodies. glad. Yeah. I am so glad that Megan was here to say that. Because, like, I didn't even think to say that because That's it was so just such a it's a just a cultural thing but yeah. i was like yes okay high five megan yeah <laughs> i mean your husband on a scale of one to ten he's pretty close to ten on the feminism but scale he can you know make stupid remarks like anybody oh anyway anyway, every I, yeah, yeah i, I make them we I could have em. said it <laughs> yeah i make them yeah for sure and mistakes yeah. will be made mm -hmm. yeah we just have to acknowledge learn and move on Totally. It took me so long to teach my husband to say flight attendant, and not stewardess. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's really interesting because so I work in uh, tech, and I'm it's I'm in a very unique position where it's fifty fifty on the gender scale, which is super Anything weird. Unique for tech. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so the the men who are there, only one of them does any protesting right now, any political activism or anything else like that, even though we're all, I mean, Chicago, we're all politically evil. Yeah. Um, so, and one of my coworkers just kind of mentioned like, isn't it weird that the women and one guy are the only ones who are active in anything, like the only ones making phone calls. Like, even if you, you know, you aren't against the administration, like you can still be making phone calls for whatever, right? But no, right. none anything. of the men are, right? So like, it's only these women and this one guy. So we're just wondering where is that coming from? Like, aren't, aren't they supportive of their political views or of their women or it just seemed weird. That's a really good point. Yeah. A lot of it is laziness. Yeah. Fear and laziness. 
or 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 could it be that women are used to working agitating? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna say yeah. being more activist. Working, yeah. <laughs> you're hilarious. Yeah. Well, you're gonna put in. It's the whole gotta have it all thing. You're right. gonna put in that work, and then you're gonna come home, and you're gonna still work. We are used. To, yeah, you're right about that. Mm -hmm. And it's not that your partner isn't also doing some work but it's that that cultural expectation for you to do that work yeah that is just completely my husband bless his heart will never fully internalize how difficult it is for me to not clean our house mm. to like not force myself to continually clean our house every day because I have, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Meanwhile, I'm like, I don't know about that. No, no, I don't think. Just that, that drive to like have that perfect existence. Yeah. I have to tell myself that that is, oh, it is okay. I know. To not be that oh, way. I don't know. I do too. I was just thinking about it today because um, I don't do that much with my kids' school, you know, at the school. Mm hmm and I just decided, like, recently, I'm not going to feel guilty about it anymore. Yeah. I don't and have time. And you're probably still going to feel but guilty. But if you're doing but it, you're yeah. be like, I'm not You're doing it at the home, yeah. though. Like, I, right. Like, I'm doing it in the home. Yeah. I have a business. Yeah. I, you know, have other activities. And I just, I can't. I can't do it. So, and I'm not going to feel bad about it. Yeah. But it is my natural tendency to feel and, really bad about it. Because you have to do all the things. Because you have to do all the things. Yeah. And exactly. does Steve feel the same way? No. No. That's my point. Hell no. <laughs> no. He'd be like, ah, I'd go volunteer once in a while, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to be on a committee or, no. Yeah. No. And, no, and no. we're just like, we're not on three and committees. Actually, we're slacking. You raise such a good point. My husband, and maybe this is a male thing, is like the least guilty person ever. If he can't no, do something, accommodate guilt. somebody, yeah. or... It's like, hey, I just can't. Mm -hmm. And he just walks off. He's perfectly fine. Yeah. How do you get that way? Yeah. Maybe it's like yeah. a mothering and instinct. Still, and still have empathy. And still have empathy, right? Yeah. And have yeah. love yeah. and yeah. kind. be a kind person. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, Yeah, my husband wasn't very empathetic or, I don't know, open to actually doing things like, being active until he became a teacher Ooh. and he was teaching on the south side so when he started actually seeing how other people live mm. he was like oh mm. now i get it i'm like i've been telling you <laughs> <laughs> sometimes some people have to see it for themselves yeah i mean even even like sometimes you're just you hear some things you're like god that's still happening you know i don't know it's yeah. just as 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 proud as we are of Chicago, mm -hmm. like we are super segregated. Oh, we're oh. Are the most. It's two cities. cities. Not only that, we're just effed. Like <laughs> the, the school we system. We got a budget, is, hooray! Yeah, the school system is totally yeah. messed up. Uh, you know, it's just oh my god, I don't even know. It's yeah. bad news. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, the right things are not being rewarded. Basically, no, I know. And all, all you can do is just keep working. That's it. That's that's the that's only how answer. I feel. I never give up. Never. I never give up hope. I never give up doing what I can. I never give up. It's it's probably my greatest strength and greatest weakness. Because sometimes you should give up. Yeah. But I just don't. Nah, I don't know why. I wish I could mm. be like that. I mean, not like that. I mean, I will keep going, but I think that when I reach my physical limit, I'll just be like, I can't. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. And my physical limit can mean a lot of things because I have anxiety, so that gets factored into that. Yeah. You know? So, um, but then I also, I mean, like, I'll also be very down, and but I, I don't allow it to take over. Like, I'm like, okay, today we're going to sit in the, in the depression and we're going to be sad about this, and tomorrow <laughs> we're not going to be there anymore. We're going to drain the pool of depression oh. and we're going to keep going. But, like, you have to, I guess, like, for me, it's just like you just need to acknowledge it, mm -hmm. and then keep going. Like you can't, you can't push yeah. it aside because it's just gonna come back. 
it will just keep coming. What back. was the the cartoon that you showed me today from Sarah? Oh, it was, someone was like, "Away with you, negative feelings. It's this petty, and I'm not going to worry about this anymore." And she like throws it away, but it's a boomerang, and it's just like <laughs> three years later, and, <laughs> she's <laughs> and she's just like that bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like, and it is nice. thoughts will come at you like that. Like, yeah, oh, I remember when that happened. Yeah, that's stuff. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But I mean. It, it's this is a thing I've had highlighted like it is crucial that you acknowledge your psychological problem areas mm -hmm. try not to humiliate exploit badmouth alien others because you two are hurting act in spite of it because you two are, are hurting yeah neat. the thing I try to always remind myself if someone's acting messed up or you know like random people I'm just like you have no idea what their day is like today exactly you have no idea what struggles they're fighting with you need to give them exactly. a kindness exactly so exactly. I, I am constantly reminding myself of that. I feel when people, it doesn't happen often, but when people come to the shop and they're like angry or super sad, mm -hmm. I always think we don't know what just happened to them mm -hmm. five minutes ago. Yeah, they might yeah. have just got the worst news of their life. Right. Yeah. You know. And that's so, the yeah. thing to keep in mind. Yeah. 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 You just have to treat them with kindness and, you know, not take it personally. Right. Because yeah. that's the thing. Like, we are all, to some extent, narcissists. And you want to think that everything is anybody about does you. is about you. Yeah. And but it's, it's not. not. It's all no. about them. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not at all. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. That, that and uh, being judgmental, I also am trying to get I'm over. So because, yeah, I'm it's just like. everyone all the time. Yeah, and I'm trying to get over it because it's like, oh, you know, hey, maybe someone's wearing those ugly pants because they have their period and they feel like shit, and that's the only thing they can wear today. And you know, they're out. At least they're out, right? So like, I don't know. So they stuff put on like pants that. today. Yeah, that's a more. big deal. I, I agree. Really hard for me to put on pants. I totally agree with that. The so, judging thing is definitely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's the you, you could have had two words in it. It's just be nice. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the next book. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I I, I like I like this book a lot, and but I, and especially if you don't you have not read a lot of feminist literature before, I think this is an awesome starting point. Um, but I will tweet out the other books I mentioned. Anything by Rebecca Solnit is just amazing. I mean, her her book um, Hope in the Dark basically saved me after the election. So oh. yeah, it was I bought a copy for all my friends the next day. Open the dark. Okay. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, so, yeah, I would give it like three stars just because of what I read beforehand. If I if it was a, if I read it before the other stuff, I probably would have given it four. How about you? Uh, out of four or out of five? Five. Oh, out of five. I I'm gonna give it a four. Okay. Um, just I I like how she captured the universality of the struggle. Mm -hmm. Um, so for that reason itself. I would give it a four. Yeah, someone commented on Goodreads. It's like, oh, this is white feminism. And I was like, oh, shit, we're going to get into it then. White and it feminism? Was, yeah, and it wasn't. It wasn't. No, like, I didn't get that. Yeah, I didn't get it out of it at all. I was yeah. like, no, this, I, I agree with you. It's pretty, like, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was pretty open. So I was kind of surprised that that was someone's comment. But you know, I think yeah. that comment could be from the fact that, and I've written this down, the default feminism in our society is predicated on white womanhood and morale. Mm. And because this is a very broad book, that is where that comic could step up. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Stars out of five? Out of five, four. Four? Okay. Good. Yeah, three and a half. <laughs> you said four, you can't so take it back. Sorry. This is 3.75. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um,. The, the next book we're going to read is Dracula, of which we were discussing it's this. It's not a feminist book. No. We were mm, discussing this before, and I do not like horror. But you like horror, you say. I like horror. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I still hide my face in the seat, but I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I didn't know that it was an epistolary literature novel, yeah. so um, that's news to me. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So, and we're going to read it in October. So, I, it does, Dracula seems a little out of place right now in the middle of summer, but it's, it's we'll because we're it talking about it in October. Yeah. That's why. Wow, so Halloween. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our guest is going to be Kevin from uh, the Evil Supply Company. <gasps> yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Figured, figured we'd go hang out in his wheelhouse. Right. Nice. Yeah. So, 
get something weird on. You both of you have read it before, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you liked it? I love it. I'm gonna be scared to on. You will be scared, yeah. You know? I just I can really, always put it I down. Love the fact. <laughs> <laughs> you could go like this. It's just and I'm gonna just like throw it across and like a bad issue. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm excited to read something that was written in the 1800s that can still be creepy. I haven't even watched the movie. Mm. Like I don't I don't know. I mean, the movie is not the same as the book, but well, I yeah. mean it's got Brad Pitt in it, right? So is it? Brad- no. Oh no, it's Tom Cruise. Wait, oh, Brad Pitt is that's really in it. Interview though. with no. the vampire. Oh, it's Interview with the vampire. Yeah, it, it is not Tom Rice. Cruise and Brad Pitt. Yeah, that is not a distillery novel. No, it is a journalism novel. Well, I don't know. Don't that's Anne Rice, Rice though, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's Christian Slater? Mm-hmm. Man, there's a lot of hotties in there. Oh, that's it's hottie central. <laughs> I should watch it. <laughs> we, we should have been on set cat calling them. Shake that man, Papa! The only man that would understand cat calling would be a celebrity. Um, oh, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure. You don't know. know. The angle of things. Yeah. Maybe they understand the male A little more. bit of the harassment being treated like a reason yeah yeah mm-hmm. interesting yeah hey. yeah well this was a good discussion thank you thank so you much. thank you for yes. having me thank you so much this was awesome yeah thanks for for, for having a or for having us at your uh for, shop the yeah. party and then for allowing well, us to talk about feminism with you so. oh it was a delight yeah two smart ladies <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and it, whenever you're in Chicago, please stop by Greer. It's an amazing store. And what is the neighborhood that it's in again? Um, DePaul. DePaul. Okay, because mm-hmm. it just moves. So yeah, um, across from the church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also any of the pie companies that we have here. You know, just make a day out of it. That's that's the LWA <laughs> tour. Get pie and then go to, go to Greer. Greer. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.